Hey guys, my name is Ivo and I'm from mytestedasp.net. In this video I'm going to port an old MVC.NET framework app to the newer ASP.NET Core MVC 3.1. The app I'm going to use is an actual production ready app. It's uh, written by one of my friends. His name is Nikolai Kostov and the app is this block system. It's a pretty neat block system written in the old ASP.NET MVC framework. Here is the source code here, so we're going to port everything here and we're going to refactor the code to follow current industry best standards because this is kind of a legacy application and it has some drawbacks. So the app has a lot of features, it has numerous controllers, an administration area, it has some YouTube fetching services, so it will be pretty interesting to port it. And I hope that you will learn something from this video and I hope that uh, you understand how to write and refactor code better because that's a very valuable quality in every software engineer because we are actually uh, reading legacy code in every huge application and we need to refactor it to follow best practices. Okay, so I'm going to create a new project. I would like to make a blank solution. Blank solution. And I'm going to do it in this folder. I'm going to upload the both projects on my GitHub uh, profile. I'm going to upload the before version and the after version. So let's create the block system here. After the initial blank solution, I would need to create a new ASP.NET project. I'm going to follow the same namespaces from the old school app so that I can just copy paste controllers and classes in general. So I'm going to create the ASP.NET Core web application to be blocksystem.web. Good. Uh, I'm going to choose web application model view controller and I'm going to change the authentication settings to be individual user accounts which will be stored in the local database. Everything else should be uh, with the default settings. Good, so this is my app. I already have some application DB context, I have some uh, redefined controllers and some areas here, so I'm going to leave this for now and I'm going to start with the database in this video because uh, it will, the video will be part of uh, numerous videos, numerous uh, a video series, so in this particular video I'm going to port the database. So the first thing I would like to notice here is that the original project has numerous data projects, one with all the models, one with all the contracts. It has a repository, a deletable entity repository and so on. And it has some um, code first data annotations and conventions which we may not need to use. Additionally it has the application DB context so we're going to start with first with the model. I'm not going to reuse the same project structure because particularly I don't think there is any reason to split the models and the DB context at least not in such a small application, so I'm going to have only a single class library. So what I'm going to need is a class library with .NET standard and 
I'm going to name it block system dot date like this. In the block system uh, dot data project, I'm going to add my models folder and then I'm going to add my uh, mig I don't need migrations uh, contracts folder. Good. So next thing I need to do is I need to copy all the classes here. We're going to take a look at them in a minute. So I need basically everything besides the packages config and the block system data models project. Good. Let me copy paste this and let's see whether everything is working correctly. So first things first, this is not needed. This is an identity user, so I need to install Entity Framework Core Identity Packages here. Entity, entity Framework Identity. Like this. So this should be the package, Microsoft ASP.NET Core. Identity Entity Framework Core. Good. Let's install it. And let's remove that for now. The user why we don't have the package installed actually. There's some error. Oh, it needs .NET Standard 2.1, okay. That's an easy fix. I agree with everything. And it should be added now. Okay, let's see the identity user. Identity user, like this, good. I can also use expressions here, so I'm going to fix that. I don't need virtual comments. And I don't need that and I don't need that apparently. Because in Entity Framework Core, I don't need to have uh, virtual properties because I'm not going to use uh, lazy loading and lazy proxy. Okay, so everything else, let's see whether it's compiling, whether it has some errors. It cannot find the contract, so let's copy these two. I'm going to open the contracts the folder and I'm going to copy everything with those two folders too. Okay. Good. So I would have an I repository, I orderable and everything else. Good. Let's rebuild that and see what is missing. So there's some is Unicode attribute convention, which I'm going to uh, delete for now, and I'm going to see how to add that in Entity Framework Core. Is Unicode attribute. Let's leave that for now. And let's see how to do Entity Framework Core Unicode Constraint con something like this. Entity Framework Core Unicode. Any 
wasn't sure whether I will need that. Let's see what is going to be needed. So let's run. Everything is compiling. So for now, I don't need that property and I'm going to uh, remove it. So maybe it's an old legacy attribute left in the contracts folder. Okay, so I have all the models. I'm not going to get into details about them. Most of these can be refactored, so let's make an Data type HTML, data type multi line text, and so on. Okay. Application user. Usually, it's not the perfect idea to have data types in the database models, but for now, I'm going to leave them like this just because I'm not sure how exactly my web layer will going to be at the moment so let's leave everything like this videos it should be okay good then what I need to do is I need to uh, at the repositories and the migrations because in the original MVC framework and the in the original dot, uh, entity framework the legacy one had automatic migrations and in the current version we don't have automatic migrations so we need to create an identity role and we need to create these application settings Essentially, this is these settings will give you everything needed for the block to work and link this batch here, this stock, stack overflow batch, recent posts, and additional uh, additional information needed for the block to run. For example, so for example, the block name, the home title, the logo URL, and so on. Okay, if I run the original block system, we will see that all of these are like placeholders for the system. Here it is, the first placeholder, the second one, the home page, home title, all of these are actual placeholders. So if you want to change uh, something so that you want to create your blog based on this system you need to change these settings okay we are going to need to add these migrations let me open the folder or I will need the DB context the repositories and the migrations are not needed for now let's go to the data project and copy paste everything so uh, everything should be changed here so that it will start working db entity entry entity entry and good. The application DB context is also having some troubles, so let's fix that. This logic here applies created on and modified on properties 
to every new newly created entity so the whole idea is to uh, make the DB context automatically save your created on and modified on entities also on when we try to delete an entity it should be the same it should set the entity as deleted okay good this is not needed also i would need to add db context options from application db context like this This is necessary for ASP.NET Core applications to run smoothly and to allow the Entity Framework Core uh, DB context to be integrated in the ASP.NET Core service provider. Good. So let's see why there is a single base. I'm going to move this because there's no reason for the base app base interface at all these are unnecessary in my opinion so i'm going to remove them uh, going to refactor some of the logic here This was entity entry. This should be entity entry too. Uh, this repository, I'm not sure whether I'm going to leave it in the source code. Let's see how we use it in the web framework and we will decide whether we'll leave it or we will delete it. The deletable entity repository makes sense because it retrieves all not deleted entities and it retrieves all deleted entities if apparently we need them. Good. Let's see whether everything builds. Good, everything is fine. Uh, I would need to wire this application DB context in the original, in the web project itself. So let's try to do that. I'm going to use startup. I'm going to add a dependency to the block system data project. I'm going to remove unneeded namespaces. So db context options use SQL Server. This dot configuration. Then we need the default identity with the application db context as uh, the identity storage and that should be more than enough good what else let's try to run the database migrations I'm going to remove and say that the database should be block system core 
because I already have the original block system database, I want to make sure that the database is the same. So I'm going to use a new database name and then I'm going to go to the package manager console. But before I'm going to add a migration, I would like to thank everyone who joined my mentorship program. If you are not familiar with it, I have a mentorship program on Patreon in which I provide different kind uh, kinds of perks, for example, uh, videos voted from the community, for example, uh, a secret Facebook group in which we can help each other grow as software developers and various other nice to have uh, coaching perks. So I would like to thank everyone who already joined. Thank you guys, you truly rock. I had five people join the mentorship program during my and a lot more who joined during June. Thank you guys, you truly rock. If you want to see what exactly this Patreon mentorship is all about, you can check patreon.com slash revivalkenov. The link is available down below in the comments and in the video description and you may check all the levels. You can have a live workshop with me, you can vote for uh, the next YouTube video lessons. This video series about porting .NET Framework projects to .NET Core project is exactly part of this mentorship program. Uh, people wanted to see that video, so I'm creating it for them and everyone else also receive it for free. And take a look at these different tiers and if you like something, you may decide to join. Everything is available, code reviews, coaching sessions, workshops, various other interesting perks. Okay, so let's create a migration, add migration. I'm going to choose data, initial tables. Oh. Able to determine the relationship represented. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we need to configure the relationships. So I'm going to add configurations folder and I'm going to make all the configurations needed for this database. First blog post configuration. Let's start with it. So, yes, key, the blog post has the ID key. Let's see what else the blog post has. It has a comment, so we need to mark that. Builder has many. Each post has a lot of comments, which the comment has one post and the foreign key is comment.blogpost ID. Delete, I would like to make that restricted. Good, what else this blog post have? Blog post type, old ID. Apparently that's something from an old system, we may not need that, so I'm going to remove it. Content holder, 
title, subtitle, meta description. It's interesting that nothing is marked as required here. So let's see how the blog post is created. If we create a blog post, create a blog post we need to well, we're creating it directly with the blog post so apparently there is no validation in this system so let's add one I'm going to add that the title is required the subtitle maybe not the content is required and let's mark these as required too. Good blog post type, blog post, short content. I'm going to mark that as required too. Image or video URL should be required too. Yeah, there is no validation here. Let me check the database. What will happen if we have a blog post design? Everything is Envar Char Max, which is not the perfect solution if you ask me. So what we can do is we can add some validations here and there okay let's start one by one I'm going to add on the blog post short content image or video URL not going to add validations here I'm going to say that the max length of the title is for example 100 symbols and the max length of the subtitle to the content the content can be envarchar max that's fine I'm going to add the meta description something like this these are SEO specific uh, columns when you create an article in the blog you can add the description in the keywords which will be uh, shown on the HTML page for Google bots or search engine bots so that's okay uh, the page should be required the content should have a required should be required and it should have a max length of I don't know let's say 5,000 symbols good setting setting these are application settings so I'm going to show them as required to blog post setting tag the tag should have a name and a max length of I don't know 100 or maybe 50 symbols good the video should have required title too because the blog allows you to add videos too let me open the website here they are good 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 max length of 50 symbols the description is required but it won't have a max length let me check everything again I need to remove the virtual properties these are required required good 
these are required I don't need the virtual property why this is called submission types these are tags submission type doesn't make sense here I guess let me check it in the original each post content holder should have a submission type and nobody is referencing that really what about the tags I'm going to rename it. Good. And also, I would need to have an another table block post in tag because these uh, the tags have multiple block posts and the block posts have multiple tags I guess because this is apparently a many-to-many -many table the relation a many-to-many -many relationship so I'm going to need to fix that okay so let's remove that content holder everything looks fine that looks fine these virtuals are unnecessary I'm going to also fix the namespaces or okay I'm you should fix the namespaces you should do them like this but I'm not going to waste time on the video so I'm not going to do that uh, okay page post comment setting this should not be virtual video and video provider okay everything seems fine good I think everything should be fixed by now Good. I'm still questioning whether the tag is actually used anywhere in this system because oops not here let's see the tag nobody creates a tag there's a tag view model class which is used here but since nobody is creating tags that's kind of suspicious nope nobody is using tags so I'm going to delete them good otherwise I needed to create a many-to-many -many table but I can see that it's not used so let's remove that there is no need to have such legacy code here uh, let's rebuild everything and see that the tag should be deleted here and here good I would like to see whether I believe that entity framework will be able to create my uh, will be able to create my migrations based on conventions because everything should be set correctly.
there is a missing foreign key here for the user ID so I'm going to add it uh, everything else looks good enough I believe What I need to do is I need to set the application user conventions because the user has a link to the post code, post comment, like this one here. So that needs to be set, I guess. Let's see what kind of migration entity framework will build and if it manages to build one, of course, and we will see whether we will need to add a manual configuration. Okay, so the sp.net users, this should be fine. Blog post, primary key, pages. Good. Primary key. Settings. Videos. Great table. Foreign key. User claim. OK. Tokens. Post comments. Foreign key. The foreign keys looks okay I believe the database should be fine one last check we need to have a comment to blog post relationship which is done an application to post comment to relationship which is also done good post comment setting video and what we can do here is we can specify that we may don't want to have cascade delete here one moment We may not want to have a cascade delete on blog post with comments, but in terms of business logic, when I delete a blog post, oh, its comments should be deleted too, so that's fine. Okay, database should be ready and should be usable. Oops. Something's not right. Yeah. Okay, what I need to do is I need to install entity framework SQL server here, entity framework core SQL server. Because apparently I don't have that installed and my migration code needs it good very nice super nice and before i update the database i would like to show you where you can find this source code i'm currently creating it's in my github profile if i will can off you may follow me if you like and go to repositories go to tv and enter this one mytestedasp.net.tv this is the repository in which i am deploying and publishing every single source code in my youtube channel all the lessons i've created you can find the source code here everything is linked here and I would appreciate if you give me a star. You may also watch the repository because this way you won't miss any new video.
and talking about missing videos make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn on the notifications bell so that um, if you're interested in advanced C-sharp lessons because I published every, everything which is not considered beginner friendly and my overall goal is to enhance your career and improve your knowledge in the .NET world. Well, I'm here, I would like to thank my sponsors, that's Endeavor. They're always looking for new developers, so if you want to um, experience new projects or you want to change your current job or you're searching for a job, make sure to check Endeavor out. My other projects are 2K, Softuni, Smart IT, Noble Hire and OneBit Software. These are their sites and my special sponsors are Bellatrix and Resharper. Thank you guys, you truly rock and I am extremely thankful for your contribution because you motivate me to continue with my educational content. You guys truly rock. Okay, so back to Visual Studio. Let's try to update the database. Done. Let's see whether the database looks okay. Block system, tables, block posts. We have comments which has foreign keys, blog post ID and user ID. These are nice. Oh, I have an error here. The user ID is required for blog posts, for uh, post comments. So let's fix that. And let's make, let's delete everything because we can do it. We can certainly do it while the app is not running in production and I'm going to mark this string as required and I'm going to run the same migration code and the same update database command to create the needed database good Block system core, good. So the block post design. Looks okay, the pages looks okay, post comments looks okay, settings and videos. The video ID should not be no to because if we have a video and we have let's fix that too if we have a video for example YouTube video the video ID should be required that's the ID in YouTube not the ID in the database so we should mark that as required too uh, I'm going to delete the migrations again and let's update the database for the final time, hopefully. Good. Deleted on and modified on are the only thing that the only comms that should not 
That should allow nose. Good. Well, everything looks fine. It's interesting that the old blog post does not have a required validation. That's that would be a pretty good disaster if you don't know how to administrate the project. It will throw too much errors, I guess. Okay, so hopefully you guys learned how to migrate Entity Framework 6.1 to Entity Framework Core because with this video we created exactly that. We transferred all the previous uh, the previous models and we fixed all the missing pieces there and we created the DB context here. So thank you guys for, for watching. I will be extremely thankful if you share this video with a friend or like it or leave a comment down below whatever you like and see you in my next video. Bye.